Hello and welcome to my final video for the Starman.net uh, art bootcamp on Vector. Uh, in this final video you will see me create an entire Vector illustration from scratch. So any sort of tricks of the trade or features of Inkscape that I didn't go over before, I most definitely will notice and go over them now. Uh, so let me start my opening my base sketch. Uh, I always recommend when creating a vector illustration you draw it on paper first and then bring it into the program. So uh, I drew this sort of faintly, but you should be able to see it. It's uh, the Chimera that doesn't have a name that stands outside the Chimera Labs in Mother 3. We don't know much about this character. I think we really should learn much more about him. Uh, in in Eyes 5's uh, comic, Birdie and Chimera, it's simply called Chimera Labs, and so I'll just call it Chimera Labs. Uh, but essentially, I opened up uh, the scan, and now it's in Inkscape. So just like the last time, I'm going to put the sketch on its own layer. Uh, call it Sketch. And open up the Layers tab so that I can paste it back in there and lock up that layer and a new sketch for my inks above it. So really when it comes to creating vector art, there are many ways in which you can uh, sort of go about it, many ways to skin a cat. Uh, the way I like to do things is um, manually tracing all of my line work, which is super, super meticulous and takes a while, but it gives me the very fine control over my lines. It's how I get them so clean looking and nice and dynamic. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, so let's get started, I guess, uh, once again, uh, just nabbing my pen tool, picking anywhere to start, really. Uh, make sure that the fill and stroke options are open, and I'm just going to start going to town. Don't worry if you uh, are not as quick with the pen tool as I am. I, I come bearing years of experience with this thing. And if you use the pen tool as maniacally as I do, you'll get very swift at tracing things. I'm just sort of eyeballing them. Um, the, other way, the other way you could do your line work in here is, um, just like last time, uh, you know, you make, uh, you make a stroke and then you set uh, you say you make a line out of it. Uh, that's another way you could do this. The other way you could do this um, is uh, by not having lines at all and simply tracing out uh, everything as a sort of its own path or shape without lines in it. You just sort of get what I'm talking about here. Uh, so yeah, there, there's many ways to skin a cat, as they say. Uh, no offense to cat lovers. But the way I do it is I just trace my line work the, the slow, slow, boring way. And maybe I should mention that um, if you ever mess up creating a path, you can simply uh, go to this tool up here. It's right below the cursor tool. It looks like a cursor that's on top of a square. Uh, that's sort of, I call it the node jiggle tool. I don't know the more proper name, but it edit paths by nodes is the proper name. Excuse me. Um, you can simply select that tool to work closer with your paths. There are options like change the node styles. You don't have to worry about those too much. Uh, the way I use it is uh, simply selecting that brings up all the nodes in the path, and then um, you can simply select the nodes that you don't like and to delete them, and then you're, you're good to go again. what I am creating, uh, once again, or if you don't quite understand it, um, these are polygons, right? These are just uh, sort of multi-pointed shapes that I'm creating. They aren't real lines, even though they are lines. Uh, in the grand scheme of the image, they're lines, but the, the way I'm creating them is simply tracing around the outside so that they are a shape into itself.
Uh, so you might have noticed what I'm doing here is something a little bit special. All of these things were for... Um, they're, they're sort of pass, but they're, they're polygons, but there's nothing too special about them. Uh, with the horn, the way I have to make this horn, and I should... Pardon me. Uh, and with the horn, I effectively have to draw the path as uh, this object with a cut taken out of it. So what I did is well, I created a big path, and it sits, it's its own shape. And then I traced the inside of the path. So once I take the difference of those two, right, I now have my, my, my horn. It's nice and has a big jolt taken out of it. The way I drew the, the, the mouth, it normally has a sort of octopus looking mouth that I just drew it in normal style. So it's sort of rough to see. I had to erase the mouth a few times in order to get one I liked, uh, but I do it in the same similar way to the horn. Um, make the outside bit and then the inside bit. Has, it's, it's, it's user interface is kind of curious. Uh, one of the weird things about it is that everything is sort of given in pictorial symbols. If you don't know what something does, just put your mouse over it and it'll give you a little tool tip that tells you what it is. Um, so, and there are also these windows over here that you can actually, I haven't shown you this, but you can uh, take those off and put them back on if I can remember how. Maybe I can't. Uh -oh. You can do it, I swear. Uh, wait, that, no. So yeah, very customizable GUI. Uh, where was I going? Okay, yeah, so the, the, there's these windows off to the side, there's a few uh, user interface options along the bottom, and one of the weird things is that based on the tool that you're selecting over here on the left side of the screen, the options will change up top. And so when, when you have a regular cursor, you get a few options that you're probably going to be using a lot. Uh, one of which is the thing that lets you arrange your objects, so for instance moving it to the top or moving it to the bottom, or up and down. Um, also uh, rotating and mirroring, so I take this eye wrinkle and rotate it around. Uh, I don't think I will be using that for anything uh, in this particular illustration, but they are nice to know. Also, uh, zooming, you should figure out a, a zooming that works for you. Um, there, there's a zoom tool, and you know you can click these things up here to zoom in and out. Uh, right clicking will zoom out. Left click will zoom in. Um, there are also these options to, for instance, immediately snap to the full extent of the illustration or zoom in to a particular zoom level. Uh, you can also hold down the control button and use your scroll wheel to move in and out. That's usually a pretty efficient way to zoom. gonna bug me though, I'm trying to remember how to, wait, wait, yeah, uh, okay, so <laughs> pro tip, um, if you want to put the, any of these windows back to where they were, uh, hit this top-ish part, and then drive them back over there, there we are, back to adventure, uh, so let's see, once again, put this one in the lower opacity to get the bottom part of this eyeball, the, uh, dark mask under the eye. Oh, very foreboding. Maybe just for fun I will leave the 
the eyeballs totally red for now, make it nice and foreboding, just like it is in the game. Uh, one thing, I don't think I'll be using this for anything, but maybe I'll show a quick detour to show it off, uh, the text tool. So, I mean, it's a text tool, nothing uh, too crazy. Uh, one cool thing is that they really just uh, got their acts together when it comes to the text tool. It used to be really slow and buggy, but of course you can select any font you want, and then these options out here would you change the, the tracking and things of that nature. And there's also, there's a few, they've, I know, Inkscape nominally prides itself on um, having everything you need and nothing you don't. There are some wacky like filters and raster effects and like rendering weird shapes. It's usually up here in the, in the filters and extensions bar. Um, I've never used them for anything, but you can play around with them. They're, they're, they're cool, but not very useful for anything. The one bad thing about Inkscape I can say is that its stability is not 100%. It crashes every once in a while, so just make sure um, to save your work every once in a while. Now this is the document properties. This is where you can set the um, dimensions of your page. And Oh, I should mention guides too. So many things I need to mention. Um, no, what I'm talking about is this other thing, Inkscape Preferences. Uh, open this up. Once again, it was up here on the upper right. Dig through this, see if there's anything that you would like to tweak. So for instance, you can change it um, with the pen tool to always use a certain style, or the way I have it right now, which is whatever fill and stroke you had before, that's what it will use the next time. Uh, things like, say you can, this is what I was getting at. I, you can turn it on so that it auto saves like every 10 min minutes, 5 minutes, whatever you want. Uh, I've never gotten it to work though. It's sort of weird. Um, however, one feature that it does, but it doesn't tell you about this, it's a really cool feature. Um, I can't show it off, nor would I want to, but um, when Inkscape crashes, it automatically saves a version of your work. It might be in a very inconvenient place, but if you dig around with it, you should be able to find it. So that's actually very helpful. That saved my butt quite a few times. The guides, you can bring guides into your work simply by uh, clicking on any part of the ruler that surrounds your image and dragging them down. So. I don't know how well you can see them, but there's a horizontal guide and a vertical guide. You can even do diagonal. Pretty sneaky, sis. And then uh, over here, I haven't touched any of it, but these are your, over here on your right are your snapping options. Um, this snapping essentially lets you align objects really easily. Um, so, let me see. Once again, these are pictures, so they're a little hard. I think it's automatically set to that. Uh, I, can, I can make it so that it'll automatically, when I'm moving in, an object around, it will snap to my guides. Or I can have it, for instance, snap to other objects. So say I want to make a checkerboard pattern, but I can't match these up quite perfectly just by eyeball. I can make things snap to the corners of each other, and there we go. It will automatically snap my box to the other box. arms. Fill is getting in my way again, so I'll make it semi-transparent, just to make things easier to trace. If for whatever crazy reason um, you're watching this and you're not familiar with my work and you want to see more of it, um, simply uh, Google on the Terrian, and you should go to either my Flickr, I put a lot of stuff on Flickr, or um, omnitarian.me is my formal website. It is also a Tumblr, so you can follow it. And let's see. I've got 
sort of line width and consistency issues that I can fix here. So one of the really cool things about this um, whole boot camp idea is that um, artists tend to be sort of neurotic about uh, sharing their secrets, I guess. Um, like they don't want to reveal the, the, the business secrets, the techniques for how they actually make things. Uh, I think that should change. Uh, more sharing, more openness, just a big old art group hug. We can share how we make things. also play around those nodes individually to do your line weights and stuff. Let me grab all of those lines that I made and turn them turn them into shapes, into polygons. And just trying to figure out the best way to do this little bit. Okay, I'm going to get super fancy. Check out these amazing path manipulation skills. I'm going to uh, make a subtraction out of this front path. So difference. And then this is this is now its own little thing. Alright, right? And then watch this X2 combo. I take the difference of that out of the thing behind it. So now um, <laughs> now this is wait, I accidentally Okay, that wasn't as Im impressive or smooth as it could have gone down, but now this is its own uh, object. So one of the things you'll see me doing, um, sort of as a shortcut, um, there are fill and stroke options down in the lower left as well. So one that you will often find yourself doing is um, you have a black fill and no stroke when you want a black stroke and no fill. And for that you can simply go down here, right click, and then swap fill and stroke. That'll usually save you a few mouse clicks. Otherwise, of course, you can do everything up here. So I'm actually gonna make the rare option of playing around with um, the line style. I'll give my lines a circular cap so that they look like wires. sort of arcane, you won't need to fuss with this two option. Uh, but there's this option between um, what happens when your strokes um, cover each other, so when you make a loop-de-loop -loop essentially. Uh, one option is that it gets covered up, the other option is that they cancel each other out, so to speak. Hard to describe, but yeah, that's what I'm working with. If you, if, if you ever have grief about uh, the snapping uh, turning on when you don't want it to, you can go into the options and turn snapping off. You can also just go over to the side here and uh, turn snapping off, just a single mouse click. Easy enough. that we can see them in all their, their pure vectory goodness. Um, so now it is time to start considering uh, our coloring and shading. Actually, sorry. You're just sitting there at home saying, when is he going to get to the coloring and shading? I want to see that part. 
Or maybe you are just um, skipping through this video to get to the, the good part. But the, the joke's on you, there is no good part. It's all just painfully boring. Okay. I wanted to get some good lines under the baguette.